on today's Locked On Texans podcast. Should the Houston Texans keep John Grenard or search outside of the building for their next top edge rusher? And how should the Houston Texans go about upgrading the running back position? You are Locked On Texans, your daily Houston Texans podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, 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 Texans fans across the nation, the great state of Texas, and especially here in the city of Houston to this Wednesday episode of the Locked On Texans podcast, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your Texans football analyst, John, some sports guy, Hickman. On the other side of Mm. the screen, as always, Texans credential media member, Sports Illustrated's own Cody Davis. If this is your first time watching or listening to the Locked On Texan podcast, thank you. Do us a favor, subscribe, like, and comment. You see the instructions at the bottom of the screen. <laughs> I'm also telling you, subscribe, like, and then also comment on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. And if you are returning to our podcast, watching or, or listening, thank you for coming back as Cody and I continue to talk. Texans. We're going to dive into what should the Houston Texans do with Devin Singletary? How should the Texans upgrade at the running back position? We kick it off with how can, well, should the Houston Texans keep John Grenard? Is that a must for the Houston Texans or not? This episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL. Use code all lowercase locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Guys, you don't understand. Cody and I are very excited about this first topic, all of the topics, but mm-hmm. you know, I think we can both agree that moving on from John Gennard only makes sense if you upgrade. And before I pass it off, guys, it's only a couple of guys that you should take over John Gennard right now. Cody, please take it away. I, I know you're going to kill it. We got to talk about it because there's a real speculation on not whether or not they will come to terms. The speculation right now that I'm seeing is whether or not Houston should even extend an offer. And I think that is completely insane. Look, th- this is the way I, I, I look at it. And I know we played around with this topic, I think, two weeks ago or whatever. And majority of what I said then, I'm going to repeat it, but it's going to be a little bit different. When I look at Jonathan Gennard, first and foremost, you're talking about a young man. Ever since he got here in 2020, you're literally looking at a young man that has been the staple of this defense ever since he's gotten here. And ever since he's gotten here over his first three seasons, what have you and I been saying? The only thing he needs to do is stay healthy and be with a defensive coordinator who can use him to his best attributes. And that is exactly what we saw here in the 2023 in the 2023 season. Coach D'Amico Rhines had an opportunity to use Jonathan Grenard, put him in a, 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 a system where he could use his best attributes as a pass rusher, as a run stopper, to help create disruption on that defensive line. But not only that, he is still and has been your same defensive cornerstone that he started his career year, career with. So there's a couple things I'm looking at. First and foremost, John, listeners, viewers, when you look at the priority as to why the Houston Texans should keep Jonathan Gennard, it goes back to one of the most important foundations that you have. And that's Will Anderson Jr. Because, look, not only does it give you the opportunity to keep your number two pass rusher on this team on that defensive front, but most importantly, you are keeping a guy that your other person and Will Anderson Jr. has a close-knit relationship with. And I understand a lot of people might look at that and say, well, you know, it doesn't matter what type of relationship they have. You just need to make sure that you have chemistry and camaraderie on the field. While that is true, it is still very important to understand the important how much relationships can actually benefit a player to play even better. And you don't have to you don't have to listen from me. Just take a listen to what Will Anderson Jr. had to say during his exit interview when he was asked about the possibility of continuing his career alongside Jonathan Grenard. Man, it's 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 been unbelievable. 
Like, JG's a great guy, man. Like, go to his house for Thanksgiving, out, go out to eat all the time, up here laughing, joking around. And it's, it's, it's for me one of the things that, like, I got to be myself. Like, I just got to be childish little Will in the room, be the young rook, have fun, make outbursts sometimes just to, like, lighten the room up and everything like that. And, man, JG's been a great vet for me, man. Like, he's been such a help this year. And just watching him grow and l watching him receive all the blessings that he's been, you know, you know, that he deserves, everything like that he's been through. Um, his testimony has been strong, bro. He's been so uplifted, positive about everything. And just to see the type of season he's had, like I told him all the time, I said, bro, like, forget the f first round pick, everything. Like, bro, I feed off you, dog. Like, bro, you're, you're, you're inspiring for me, bro. Like, I see the juice that you bring every day, the, the, the type of competitor you are, how bad you really want to be great, bro. And we all feed off of that. He just brings the type of energy and the type of juice to the room that's unmatched. I think the number one issue that people have when you look at whether or not the Houston Texans should bring back Jonathan Grenard is, of course, the money. Now, John, I went on spot track. I, I don't I, think that's going to be a big deal. <laughs> look, I, I went on spot track. And I looked at the market value. As of right now, we all know the market value is an estimate of what these players can actually make for their next contract. And as of right now, Jonathan Gennard is projected to sign a four-year deal worth $53 million, which would give him an average of about $13 million annual. I'm okay with that. Because if you look at a player that you can, let's say for the sake of this argument, you let JG walk. And you bring in somebody like Josh Allen. You're looking at a situation where you're going to have to pay Josh Allen at least $10 million more million. He's coming in with a market salary of $23.5 million a year annually. So it just doesn't make sense to me for the Texans to let Jonathan Grenard walk when he has been a a foundation for your defense ever since he walked in the door off of 16 and Kirby. And you're looking at a young man who has gotten better every single year, so much so his career year this past season had people questioning whether or not the NFL got it right in giving Will Anderson Jr. the Pro Bowl nod and not him. Speaking of Will Anderson Jr., he is basically best friends with your foundational piece that you want to make sure that you keep. And then three, most importantly, not only does players in a locker room want to keep JG here, but JG wants to stay. Right. He wants to stay in the city of Houston. So you can actually get him at a hometown discount. Like to me, John, it just doesn't make sense to entertain the, 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 the possibility of letting John Grenard walk. Because when I take a look at the pros and cons, the pros to me definitely outweighs the cons. Wait, okay. So I think the con for John Grenard, unquestionably, undoubtedly, and, and, and I would say this and use this against your argument of he, him being a cornerstone piece, the time missed through That's his fair. first four, That's fair. four seasons. Uh, sophomore season, a sacks, you know, balled out, and that was a very bad defense. He was a bright spot. For that bad defense, even so, still did not finish the season. Junior year in the league, same issue, didn't finish the season. In his best year now, still 12 and a half sacks. And I'm looking at him in his first career, his first year under D'Amico Ryan, saw career highs, 12 and a half sacks, career highs in QB hits, career highs in total pressures. Still did not finish the season. So when you look at cons, absolutely time missed away is a con for John Grenard. But again, like I just mentioned, in his first year under D'Amico Ryans and Matt Burke in this defense, saw career highs across the board. And so to get a little bit more advanced, John Grenard saw the sixth most double team percentage, but finished seventh in edge rush, edge pass rush win rate rankings. Gennard had four games of two or more sacks this year, 15 tackles for loss. Those are just the numbers combined with the fact that Gennard improved a lot uh, a lot in the ways that he can get after the quarterback this year. Guys, I, I can't, if you cut that tape on, we could just talk ball. You cut that tape on, you're seeing him get after the quarterback, spin move, rip move, dip move, club move, just actively improving as a pass rusher, which, by the way, was one of the things that we liked about him coming out. It wasn't necessarily mm -hmm. just him being 
a bigger body edge rusher that can just maul over tackles. No, it was him being able to finesse his way to get sacks. Remember at Florida, he was, you know, standing up, uh, three-point stance at times, two-point stance. And so just ways to, for him to get better getting after the quarterback. And in a career year, he did that very well. Again, again, four sacks, four games or two or more sacks. He just blossomed under D'Amico Ryans, under uh, Coach Azir. Now we have uh, Coach we just talked about was brought in last year from Miami. Uh, Coach Rod Wright, right? He blossomed under the coaches this year. And just seeing D'Amico Ryans get more comfortable with him uh, throughout the year, using him on stunts and everything, and just learning the league and getting better at it. Cody, as you mentioned, he's projected to make $13.4 million. That was in my notes in free agency. This is according to Spot Rack. I, I 100% agree with you. And I'm going back to my original point. You only move on from him if you're not able to, A, reach a contract deal that makes sense for both parties. And so I can see Houston saying to themselves, Nick Osario will, because he says this all the time, you value the player, what you value that player for the team, and, mm-hmm. and look at the money, right? Those got to match up. And so you're looking at the situation, do I want to pay John Gennard? Twenty million for four years for eighty million dollar contract. If, I, if I'm the front office, well, now that gets to the place where it's like mm, I don't know. I don't think I want to do that. But for thirteen one, thirteen four, whatever it is, that's good money. Mm-hmm. And again, for Houston, I, I see a lot of draft this guy, or draft that guy. Guys, this is a team that's building to be contenders. They drafted their guys at their staple positions, and they will continue to do so. But if you have an opportunity to hold on some of the better players, better vet that's already on your team, you do so. And I think there's only two guys you look at bringing in for Houston. Cody, you already mentioned Josh Allen. But again, Mm -hmm. as we mentioned, that's an additional $10 million that you have to shell out. Uh, The other guy that I would say is Brian Burns. And I think with Burns, he and Grenard, when Grenard is healthy, they have similar games. And again, Grenard would be cheaper than both of those players. And he can still be as impactful, maybe just more impactful, maybe, maybe more impactful in year two than he was in year one under D'Amico. So I'm sticking with Grenard. And another mm-hmm. point is those are the younger guys available, which realistically gives Houston an extended window of impact players that they can have, uh, they can have better days to come. So like you bring in a rookie, will that rookie have the same impact that Will Anderson had on a team that's growing defensively? I don't think so. If you bring in anybody outside of the three, because the Houston has money and I don't think Houston should be afraid to spend it. But if you bring in anybody that's not John Gennard, that's not Brian Burns, that's not Josh Allen, 25, 26, 26, 26, 26, essentially all 26 years old, essentially have a window to where a four-year deal, you're giving your team an opportunity to have some of the best of the best guys at their position. Yes, it's absurd for some people to say, don't even look towards re-signing John Gennard. Yes, that's crazy. Yes, I'm glad a lot of us are not GMs. <laughs> yes, John Gennard should be a Houston Texan moving forward. Mm-hmm. Again, unless it's Josh Allen and Brian Burns. Uh, a lot of you guys want Clowney back. Clowney had a great year, but he's, he's, he's turning 31 this year. I think maybe 31 or 32. His time in the league is getting up in age, and you want a team to be built around. the. If you're good, if you're this good, some youth, so you can extend your window of winning games. Mm-hmm. No one should not be Chase Young. I don't think Chase Young, talent-wise, he surpasses John Grenard. But a lot more goes into the game of winning than just talent. And I have not seen that from Chase Young consistently. Also, you cannot bring up John Grenard injury history and not have the same uh, uh, voice beating the drum, beating your chest for Chase Young. So, I'm sticking with John Grenard on this one. Houston should definitely work a way to keep him. We know what Sunday is, but not only it's Sunday, the Super Bowl, where I know you ain't going to leave your couch. College basketball right now is kind of popping. I'm not going to lie. I got that kid from Kentucky. He's balling. Women's college ball. 
Ooh. is really like the talk of the town. They got probably the best product in terms of basketball. The NBA got some good matchups going on right now. And when you lock in, you hit that couch, you don't want to move, the best place to hit up when you still got to eat and get something in your stomach and get your snack on, undoubtedly, is DoorDash. So listen, order wings, order pizza, soda, burgers, or just you want to order some buns. You got everything already in the kitchen, in the refrigerator, and you missed that one thing that got you tripping. Go ahead and order on DoorDash. Get it all delivered without missing the game. Kick back at halftime um, with unbeatable deals on everything you need to watch the party, to have a watch party, or to tailgate. And the best part about it, if you are new to DoorDash, coding listeners, guess what? They got something for you. You get 50% off up to $10 value when you spend $15 or more dollars on your first order. When you download the DoorDash app and enter code LOCKED23, that is LOCKED23, L-O-C-K-E-D-2-3. Again, download the DoorDash app, and for you newcomers, they got a 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 or more dollars on your first order. When you download the DoorDash app by entering code LOCKED23 at DoorDash. Uh, you will not want to miss out on that promo deal. And right after you order with DoorDash, especially if you do this before the game, go ahead and download Prize Picks, America's funnest and easiest way to play daily fantasy sports. It's just you against the numbers. Uh, the app right now has over 3 million members. So over 3 million members are getting in on some of the fun right now. Uh, you pick the more than or less than on two to six player stat projections. You sit back and watch the winnings roll in. The big game is right around the corner this Sunday. Prize picks is the easiest and most exciting way to turn every game-changing moment into 100 times your money. Oh, 100, 100 times? 100 times your money with as little as four correct Picks. Y'all better get in on this. I know I am. You can turn $10 into $1,000. Are you hearing me correctly? If Pat Mahomes throws for more than one yard, and we know he will, in the big game, you win on prize picks. It's demon time on prize picks. You can now win up to 100 times your money with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into $1,020. Into, I'll get what I'm saying. Valentine's Day is around the corner. You may need a little extra cash if y'all want to take it, take it there and get a little jazzy with it. Go ahead. $10. You can turn $10 into $1,000 on Prospects, the number one daily fantasy sports platform. Go to prospects.com slash locked on. Use code locked on for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, go to prospects.com or download the app and use promo code locked on for a first time deposit match up to $100. Welcome back, locked on Texans listeners and viewers. How should the Texans upgrade the running back position? Guys, I think it's simple. I, I I really do. I, I think there's two ways to go about this. What I've been saying for a long time, number one, is you got money, spend it. Hmm. Because when you really got to spend that money in about three seasons, four seasons, oh my when that contract extension <laughs> kick in, you're going to have to pay that Jones with it is. <laughs> Right, right, because you, you might have Will Anderson around that time, CJ going to be around that time, Tank Hank around that time. <laughs> So you're going to have some players that you're going to have to pay, but spend the money you haven't spent it. And again, there's no doubt in my mind. I don't want to put a number out there, but I think Houston will restructure contracts to give themselves more wiggle room this free agency. But I also think Houston should be a team that starts to look at building depth at positions, right? When one guy goes down, we've seen this team be crippled. Hmm. You see it with the wide receiver position. You kind of saw it with the, the lack of production from the running back position until Houston uh, stopped being so stubborn and just said, hey, Devin Secretary is stepping in full time for us moving forward. We saw it a little bit with the offensive line position, but those guys held up a little bit better than I think a lot of people would have assumed. We saw it with the safety position. MJ Stewart and, and, and Eric Murray went down, and that took a lot of the continuity away on that back end of that defense. 
And they left Jimmy Ward, who struggled to stay out there for a lot of those games, and Jalen Petrie, who struggled this year, to really be productive. And so I, I see Houston they got a few seventh-round picks. I think they should come away with a running back between six and seven. Uh, no doubt about it. Mm. If you like a guy if in the fifth round, maybe, but and I like Ray Davis from Kentucky. I do. I like uh I kind of like Cody Schrader from Missouri. We talked about him yesterday. Uh what he could possibly be from a seventh round draft pick perspective, maybe undrafted. Uh kid that rushed for over sixteen hundred yards, produced in a zone scheme, run style. But when it comes to active players in the NFL right now, no question, Saquon Barkley. Hmm. And I and I think and I think he has the highest uh, the Texans have the highest odds to sign him. I'm looking on spot rack right now. And again, this is just you know just numbers based off what it can be, but he's gonna be right under uh 10 million dollars. Three years, 29.9 million dollars, an average salary of 9.9 um per year. You know, he signed the uh he signed the uh, the franchise tag last year. Didn't reach a thousand this year, but they had they had a, a terrible offense. That, their offensive line in New York was way worse than what the Houston Texans had, guys. But Saquon can still be a very productive running back. Saquon could be a guy like a lot of people who I've talked to in the past believe Reggie Bush could have been for the Houston Texans when you know you need an extra weapon out of that backfield. Now, I know times were different back then, mm. and Houston has Tank, and they have Nico, and they have an actual quarterback that can maneuver in the pocket well, even when the pocket breaks down, compared to around that time when they had uh, the Carr brother. But given what Saquon can do as a zone runner, given what Zay- Saquon can do as a as a receiver out of the backfield when healthy, and I thought Saquon had some good moments for the New York Giants. Again, all things considered, playing behind one of the worst offensive lines in the NFL. Contractually, I think it makes sense. Fit, I think it makes sense, right? And, and I think explosiveness, it makes sense. Adding another weapon to this offense, it makes sense. And he can be your lead back. And we'll talk about Singletary. But do I think Saquon is a – Three down back now every game. Do I think Saquon should get between 20 to 25 touches every game? No, I don't. But I think that if you give Saquon between 12 to 17 carries in a game, you're going to have a very good chance to be productive, have a productive offense because of how he can open up your playbook whenever the ground game is working. Some of the best games we saw this year, Devin Singletary was, was killing me, was crushing me. Some mm-hmm. of the best, some of the best moments, right? Uh, whether it was average yards per carry or just overall reaching 100 yards, and so Saquon, I think, would unlock a different version of this offense. That when you look at the end of the next year, possibly, of course, looking way ahead, but you maybe thinking to yourself, "Wow, this Houston's offense, top three, top five. Look at what the addition of Saquon Barkley did, not only for CJ." But for the receivers, but for the tight ends, <laughs> but for the offensive lineman, because he can – I don't think Houston's offensive line is as worse as New York. And he can make some of the linemen here. And if they get healthier and if Kenyon Green does what he needs to do, you may see a 1K season on Saquon. Mm. Well, John, you say something that I will 100% sign off, and that is don't be scared to spend money in free agency. And I'm all for it. And don't be scared. Don't be scared. Look, I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just go ahead and say it. Talking about not being scared to um, spend money. I personally believe that the Houston Texans should spend the most money upgrading their offensive backfield. And I say that only because, look, there's a couple things. One, the most money. The most yeah, they got, money. They got to they upgrade their secondary. I, I, well, 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 well. well. Hear me out on this. And we're going to we're going to look into this more so tomorrow because I want to go position by position to see should the Houston Texans favor a game changer or just somebody that can actually, you know, add depth purposes to a position group. And I, I'm, I'm going to say my thoughts about the about the safety unit. But when, when I look at this, 
backfield, the offensive backfield, and I take a look at what they have at the running back position. And later on in the show, we're going to get into Devin Singletary. But the reason why I say I believe they should spend the most money on that offensive backfield is because, look, you're bringing back Bobby Sloyd as your offensive coordinator. And we all know that he is dying to run the football, and rightfully so. And we saw how much better this offense can look when you have a guy like Devin Singletary finding his niche in these games, i.e. the game against the Cincinnati Bengals when he had, what, I believe a buck 50 in that game, i.e. when C.J. Stroud went down, you had an opportunity to go in Tennessee and win the game, and Devin Singletary was the key player on the offensive side of the ball in that victory. There was moments where we said, wow, this is what this offense can do when you have a reliable running back. Devin Singletary, as great as he looked this this all this this season, I would consider him a reliable running back. But can you imagine if you sign Saquon Barkley or Josh Jacobs and bring them here to the city of Houston? This offense is going to be looking even better. And this is what Coach D'Amico Ryan's had to say about how much they're going to put into improving this run game during the exit interview. The running game will be uh, significant for us to improve upon. I think as you see as you go throughout this game, especially in the postseason, right, teams that win games, you got to be able to run the football, right, and sustain it. And we weren't able to accomplish that versus the Ravens, and it showed up. So we have definitely areas to improve, uh, many different areas, but run game is one of those areas. I think people are just afraid of spending money. And, and, and so when Houston no, has to spend money afraid. in the past – well, not when Houston had to spend money in the past, they spent money on guys like Eric Murray, right? <laughs> they spent money on guys like uh Rex Burkhead, right? They spent oh, money on goodness. guys like so just retired, they, by the they way. Spent, he did shout out to Rex Burkhead. They spent money on players that was just filling the season. Mm-hmm. Moving forward, there's no more filling seasons. Exactly. You have an opportunity to be special, so you gotta act like it. If I'm Houston, I wouldn't be shocked if. And look at maybe if you miss out on Saquon again, who they lead the odds right now of signing him, Tony Pollard. I think he'd fit with what Houston want to do. Took over as the lead back in Dallas. I don't think he's going to be as expensive as Saquon Barkley. Uh, didn't have the year that he was expecting to have. But Tony Pollard, I think, would be good here in Houston. You could also combine him with Devin Singletary, two guys that you could probably get a ball to between 12 to 15 times a game, whether it's Running the ball or receiving the ball, and they can be as impactful. But what did what to do with Devin Singletary? We'll talk about that next. This segment is brought to us by our sponsor, Better Help. Sometimes we all need the opportunity to get things off of our chest, big or small. Certain things can really start to get to us. And it's important to let those things out, especially to someone who's unbiased on your life. So today, I want to say how I really feel about something. I want us all to say how we really feel about something. You may even be thinking the same thing. And what I want to get off my chest is, while we're here talking about the Houston Texans free agency, stop being scared of what's next. Stop it. In order to get to the top, you got to spend some money. And for those of you who are trying to avoid that money, reallocate it to areas or to players that really may not make sense just because you like them doesn't mean it's right. Don't mean I'm right, but I definitely can tell you this, the Texans got money to burn and they got to do it. They got money to blow, as Lil Wayne used to say, and they got to spend money, and I believe that they will. Um, Now to get back to the serious side, therapy can be different for everyone. And I think therapy is important for everyone. Most of us have bigger problems than what the Houston Texans will do in free agency or what our favorite sports teams are thinking about doing. And it's important to get things off our chest every once in a while. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give better help a try. It's entirely online, designed to be flexible and suitable to your schedule. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on to get 10% off your first order. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P. Dot com slash locked on. 
Welcome back in, Locked On Texas listeners and viewers. Question, what to do with Devin Singletary? My quick answer, re-sign him if he wants to stay. I think he balled out. If other teams want to come calling for him, uh, I, I think he played well enough for other teams to reach out to Devin Singletary's agent and say, hey, uh, we like Devin. We like what he did last year. Considering his circumstance, we want to bring him to our team. There are some teams out there that may be running back needy, but if I'm Houston, I'm looking to – I'm really looking to invest into this backfield. And, again, we talked about St. Quan, Cody, you mentioned Josh Jacobs. I, I think especially if they miss out on those two and the possibility of re-signing or signing Tony Pollard, that may be amazing for Houston. That will be, you know, mm. a pretty balanced backfield between the two. No other back would outshine the other one. But I would love to, for them to bring back Motor. I think Motor played very well for Houston. All things considered, could have been a 1,000 yard rece- uh, running back as well. <laughs> yeah, most definitely, man. I 100% agree with you. Even if they do um, get an opportunity to sign, to sign Saquon Barkley or Josh Jacob for the sake of this argument, what I just say, John, I believe the most money you should spend should be on, on your offensive backfield, man. And you definitely have, you definitely need to make sure that you re sign um, Motor. Look, I'm not going to put Motor as high on a priority list like a um Jonathan Gunnar, but he's definitely should be on the Houston Texans list of must do for this offseason because look if you bring in a, a running back like a like a um Saquon Barkley or Josh Jacob or whoever the case might be um then you're going to give Motor an opportunity to do what he does best you know not only is he a reliable rusher but he, he's also a reliable pass catcher he's also a reliable blocker and then if anything happens to your quote-unquote running back one then you already know you have somebody that's going to come in and actually have an opportunity to fill that vacancy. So, you know, without a shadow of a doubt, they definitely need to make sure that they keep uh, motor. Um, I'm pretty sure it's just going to be like the, like every other question that we have here. Um, you know, what is the asking price? What is the market value is going to be for Devin Singletary as of right now? But this is a team that, if you want to elevate from playoff to championship contention, especially while you have your key players on these rookie deals, these are the type of moves that you definitely have to make. So without a shadow of a doubt, Devin Singletary definitely should continue wearing the new Houston Texans jerseys that should be dropping, I believe, the week of the draft, if I'm not mistaken, sometime in April. Cool. Thank you all for watching and listening to this episode of the Locked On Texans podcast. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment to the Locked On Texan podcast on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, follow me on Twitter at John underscore Hickman 12 as well. And as always, I'm your host, Cody M. Davis. Please remember to follow me on Twitter at Cody Davis underscore 24. Once again, that's Cody C-O-T-Y-D-A-V-I-S underscore 24. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, peace.